kind of a homecoming week for you, huh? Mm -hmm. Just a few hours down the road, right? A few hours, yeah. How does Maybe. it feel? I mean, does it, does it feel cool to, to be able to, to do Because you never even, you haven't fought in Florida ever, right? I haven't. Like I told people before, you know, I fought. You know, MGM, Madison Square Garden, Satama Super Arena in Japan, and I just always wanted to fight home, and I have the opportunity to do it now. So, even with the situation that happened, I was supposed to fight January the 24th. That didn't happen. It was trying to find a last minute replacement. They called, was like, we want to move them down to Orlando. And my trainer was still trying to find a last minute replacement. I was like, wait, hold on, hold on. I think I can bear training for the next month. So, um, bear training for the next month, and uh, I'm here now. I mean, you fought in, in Nashville a few times, but does this feel different just because it's completely new and because this is this is where home was for, for so many years when you were coming up? Definitely. I mean, I don't get it wrong. Um, Tennessee is home now, but, like, you know, this is where I grew up. This is where basically I found myself is Florida. Florida pretty much everything I knew up until I was 18 and went to the University of Tennessee. How many, how many family and friends are coming? Um, I don't know the exact number, um, but I know I have a, a lot of family and friends coming. I got family here in Orlando. You know, my parents stay about a three hours drive from here in Immokalee. Um, still got family for a lot of them in Miami area, so I know a lot of people is going to end up making the trip up here. What are you planning for after the fight, St staying around here for a little while? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, I'm not coming back until probably Wednesday or Thursday. Um, but. You know, just get the fight out the way, spend a little bit of time with family, then, you know, go back up to Knoxville, get back to work. What's the one thing you miss about Florida? Uh, of course, the weather. <laughs> uh, the weather in Tennessee, now mind you, is good sometimes, but at around this, the winter time, the weather tend to be bipolar. So one day it might be 70 degrees, the next day it might be 30 degrees, the next day it might rain, and the next day it might call for snow. It literally lines up like that. You know, when you get down to Florida, pretty much everything is consistent. The weather is always going to be good. So looking at the weather driving here, every time I pull up Knoxville weather and I pull up Immokalee weather, it's like 70, 80, 87 degrees back home right now, which is good in Knoxville. I don't know what it was. Last time we left, it was 70 degrees, but two days prior before that, it was 30 degrees. What's on your pub sub? Public subs, what's on it? Public? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I. I just go over there and just grab random stuff. <laughs> so. We're in the uh, Disney World, Atlanta Disney World, and I'm a Disney employee with ESPN. Thanks. I gotta ask you: If you were a Disney character, any character, any movie character, I think, who would you be? Any Disney. Or, any, or who would you know best reflect you? Let's say. Any Disney character. Hey, Marvel, Star Wars, Disney. I just got seeing the Black Panther. <laughs> so I'm <would> saying <laughs> Black Panther. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'll probably say that. But Disney movie, I, I really don't, I don't know. I haven't watched a Disney movie in so a you while. Did you see Black Panther? Yeah, I've seen it like twice in two, a day and a half. I How think was it? it was good. It was good. So awesome. Yeah. You talk about this this run that you're on right now. Obviously, you got the the couple Von Flew show chokes. You, you got a head kick knockout. What is kind of clicking right now that maybe wasn't clicking when you had this the kind of little, that rough stretch that came uh, right before it? Um, I don't have to pace myself anymore. You know, a lot of times, like, it, it, it's different. When In the process, when I tell people, like, when I train, the way I train about sometimes, like, when I feel myself getting tired in training, I'm going to push myself a little more. And I feel myself want to back out, I'm going to push myself a little more. And I start getting myself in the mindset, the way I feel right now is probably how I'm going to feel during fight night fresh. That's me fresh fight night. Because people don't understand, it's just like, you can feel fresh during training camp and stuff, but you still got to cut weight, so that's going to zap a lot out of you. But, you know, I've been um, I've been training with a good strength and conditioning coach, Frank Abadia, and he breaks me down more mentally than physically. Physically, I won't break. I will never quit because just in my DNA. Um, you know, I've been an athlete all my life, but, you know, mentally you can get, mentally you can get into your own head. And sometimes, like, if I want to throw a certain combination and I know – I can throw the combination. I'm like, oh, man, if I throw this combination, I'm going to zap my energy level a little too low. So now I'm just like, whatever I want to throw, I'm going to throw. When you got the call last fall uh, for the original fight with him, what did you think about the TP as an opponent and sort of what he brings to the table? I mean, he's not, obviously a guy who's been around a little bit and not necessarily easy to put away. And he just kind of he just kind of always seems to be there in any, any fight that he's in. 
Um, you know, that's the challenge about him. He, um, he knows how to, uh, he knows how to, I guess, play the game pretty good. But he's also a really good wrestler. Um, definitely, um, you know, when I got the call, it was actually, because people said I called him out. And essentially, he called me out first. Second time, I just wanted to let him know that I heard him. So, because, you know, it's kind of back and forth thing on Twitter or whatever, but I just wanted to let him know I heard him. But you know, I got the call and I was ready for it. And, um, you know, he felt like he can capitalize against me. And I was like, okay, come with it. So when this got pushed back a month ago, I mean, what does that, I'm sorry, what does that do for you in terms of, you know, you were what, like 10 days out or something? I mean, how deep were you into your weight cut? And, and how frustrating is that to know, like, you know, this, this is getting pushed now. I did all this work and now it has to go on hold. Uh, like I said, initially I was a little frustrated, but um, like I said, opportunity always presents itself and, you know, I'm capitalizing on opportunity. And, you know, when the opportunity presented me to be in Florida, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I don't mind about this pushback. You know, my trainer, Eric, told me to take about four days off, and I told him why, and he was like, the next month is going to be pretty strenuous again. So I was basically jumping right back into fight camp. So um, that's what we did, and everything started clicking. You know, um, game plan never changed. Everything stayed original, and it just gave me more time to actually, actually implement my game plan, and um, it, it came to very much so. Talk a little more about Ilya and the and the difference in body types between the two of you guys and what kind of challenge that brings. Um, it, it brings for me. I think it brings a lot of challenges just because and he's a lot shorter athlete than I am. So basically, you know, I can't overcommit on my punches because he's going to be right in my inside. And if he does that, he's going to try to attack. He's going to uh, try to attack. If he snags the leg, more than likely he might go flying. Um, but I know I present a lot for him just for the simple fact that, you know, I'm a lot longer than he is. Plus, when you talk about the 205 division, I'm one of the bigger 205 pounders, and I'm probably one of the stronger 205 pounders, too. And, yeah, probably all around have definitely most power within the 205 division. Um, I think I present a lot of problems to him that way. I know he's going to try to come in close, try to keep every either. Either his gap of window is not going to be in between. He's going to be either right here inside, inside or he's going to be <laughs> across the cage. So, um, you know, um, with, that said, with that being said, definitely have the reach advantage. Um, he definitely has a little more experience than I do in wrestling, but my wrestling has come along really good too. So, What's been the biggest focus in training camp in terms of has there been one particular facet of your game you've worked on more than others? Um, not necessarily. To be honest, like with with our training camp, the way we go about our training camp, we always have a game plan and stuff. But our game plan is always, you know, focus on um, the particular fight. But our game plan also revolves around pretty much any other fighter that I'm going to fight too. So, you know, with him is uh, of course going to be trying to um, um, stop the takedowns and if need be, get the takedowns too. Given how impressive your previous three wins are, a couple bonuses, realistically, I mean, shouldn't you have had a, a third bonus in there? Shouldn't that first bomb flu show have been a, a bonus too? I thought so too, but, <laughs> you anyway, know, I, I, it's, just, it's, just, it's just me. So, uh, If you get another impressive win over a guy like him on Saturday night, where do you feel like that puts you in the title picture? I mean, that's obviously a question that you'll get the, the more you keep winning. Um, It's crazy as much as uh, definitely – probably still in the top five, hopefully, but it's crazy. You start seeing these guys in front of me, they're seeing everything that's happening, but nobody's not going to do anything about it. Or nobody's going to want to be like, okay, I'll challenge Joe Vince. So um, it's going to be funny trying to get fights after this. The, the fact that DC is moving up and that fight is, you know, into the middle of the summer and that, that puts the belt kind of on hold, does that play to your advantage that you can still keep racking up wins in the meantime? Oh, yeah, definitely. As long as I keep myself active, that's the biggest thing. So, I mean, if you think about it, like, if I would have fought last month, that would have been three fights in, what, four months. You know, now I'm with three fights in five months. So as long as I keep myself active, I mean, I'm good. So I don't keep my I, – I tend to have a long layoff and get a little bit complacent and stuff. So I just want to keep myself active. So yeah, I think the record is six in 12 months. So is that something – not in a calendar year, but six in like a, in a twelve month stretch. So you're on pace. I mean, I've done eight fights in a year before. I've done that before in three fights in seven weeks. I've 
I mean, that's nothing to me. So, but it's uh, something to do it at the UFC level. So, I mean, is that something you'd like to chase? I mean, you uh, get three more after this one this year. Um, yeah, it's something. It's just, yeah, it's something. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll probably like to do that. I like records.